Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Find the Ohm and Mom podcast. And I'm here with my friend, Carrie Miller. And we met through Pure Joy Parent Coaching. And I was actually, oh, see, there goes the first interruption. My dog, can you hear it? That's why. <laughs> so we met through Pure Joy Parent Coaching. And actually, I was a group coach at the time. So I had Carrie as a buddy, which was really exciting. So I am so glad to reconnect with you today. The podcast is all about finding that inner wisdom again in motherhood outside of the role of motherhood, finding mm. that spark again, um, that fire that lights you up and keeps you going through all of it. So um, for me, um, that is spirituality. He's my son's over here. That's why I'm distracted. All spirituality, good. learning, inner work, always studying. Those are the things that light me up. And I found that that was kind of challenging to continue to do that stuff when motherhood started. So um, that's the whole premise of my podcast and why I love to talk to other moms about this stuff and keep myself doing the things I love. Okay. What do you need, buddy? Okay, thanks for telling me. Go ahead. He's going to go say hi to his dad who works across the parking lot here in our house. Oh, my so, God. Yes. <laughs> so I brought Carrie here because I know just like her, she's a lifelong learner. I know she loves to learn and she loves to share that knowledge, too. So um, why don't you just start with sharing who you are? you know, before motherhood, during motherhood, what you love to do in your work. Um, and we'll start with the introduction. Great. Yeah, we have a lot in common, Tanya, for sure. <laughs> and I was so glad when I signed up for the Pure Joy Parent Coach training to have you as like the uh, mentor, because I also am a lifelong learner. And the things that light me up inside are just always learning new things, getting out in nature um, in, in a very receptive way. Like, look at that, look at that, look at that. And when you become a mom, those two things are a lot harder to do, especially with little babies. Mm -hmm. um, and my son, Oliver, had really bad colic for the first year. And so he would only settle. He was upset all the time. Mm. He would only settle and sleep if he was on me nursing, strapped to my body, somehow bouncing on an exercise ball on my chest, right? Yeah. Or um, we did find a couple of swings that could calm him. Didn't mm. always work, but at least that was one thing where I could like bathe you know? <laughs> yeah. And I know you're not alone. I know there's a lot of moms that listen that this, I have a, a really good friend who had the same, same with her child, just that physical contact and having that child with you all the time can be so exhausting, right? <laughs> yes. And I um tend to feel other people's feelings. I've discovered I'm an Enneagram type two. <laughs> and so it was like this cycle of just, it's breaking my heart that he feels this way, but it's also breaking my heart that I need some space, you know, and time mm -hmm. to just exist. And then feeling that guilt, right? This, this cycle of uh, just mm -hmm. nobody's, nobody's happy. Yeah, and, uh, I really uh, struggled a lot in postpartum depression. I didn't see that coming, but that hit me pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And then my husband was doing a surgical residency and literally working a hundred hours a week. So that was bad timing. Um, but, uh, and we were away from my family. My, we were like three hours away from my family mm -hmm. and I'm very close with my mom. And so that was hard too. So it was just a combination of factors that made it a really difficult first two maybe even three years of Oliver's life and of my introduction to motherhood and I always wanted to be a mom because I love kids I've always worked yeah. with kids I was a science teacher for 10 years and then I went to school for um, counseling psychology but with a focus on children and adolescents and families I really like family systems mm -hmm. and so all this knowledge right you think would have served me well but <laughs> I realized I 
you know, I'm giving all this good advice and it's all very sound about self-compassion and self-care and balance and boundaries and recognizing everyone's needs and having it be like a garden that you're growing, but you got to make sure everyone need, has what they need to blossom. But I wasn't doing that for myself mm -hmm. at all. Um, yeah, so I just took a really massive breath because yeah, I'm just like, I'm colluding with you, Carrie. Yes, yeah, we know it all, right? We learned it all. We're like we do other people. Do it. It's like, where's the time to practice it and learn it and integrate it into our own life? And I don't even think it's hypocrisy because we really do believe it and see it working for other people. Mm -hmm. It's more a lack of self-compassion and self-care. It's a lack of yeah. Um, and I do think that learning about that Enneagram tuness has helped me because it, it helps me realize why I'm constantly doing that, um, putting other people's needs above my own instead of letting them be equal. So it's a, been a journey for me to try to do that because my whole life I've done that, right? I was the helper in the family. That was my role. I'm a twin. And my twin sister, I adore her, but it was always like I would sing her to sleep. And oh. I, you know I mean, like I loved being that role mm -hmm. it suited me but it would lead to these periods of like emotional overwhelm and shutdown and then needing to rejuvenate myself and then get back into it but I never found a way to just balance it it was always a help 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 crash help 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 help, help, help crash and I felt like when I became a mom it was just crash it was just <laughs> lay yeah. on the floor Oh, yes, I yes. <laughs> I, I totally, I'm totally there with you. Um, being the oldest of five kids and having that role of caretaker and mm -hmm. um just always doing it. And then also that uh that desire that we both have to learn and absorb information and have time to study and and share the knowledge. Um and realizing where's the time for that anymore when I became a mom because there was that like, take, take, take care, 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 care. And then <laughs> a crash. Um, and I crashed several times before even motherhood. And so then during motherhood, I was like, well, there's something, there's something here deeper that I'm, there's a pattern here that I need to un uncrack, right? Like, um, because I'm giving, 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 and I love to do that, but I am not actually filling my own cup along the way and I thought I was right I thought oh yeah I got this I got this handled I know what I'm doing I was a money I was a mother since eight years old right but I didn't I never no one taught me how to fill my cup mm -hmm. throughout my childhood no one taught me that that was an important thing to do mm -hmm. so um, yeah as a teacher I was like I'm gonna teach the kids like this is an important skill to have right and still still I'm not getting it's still not percolating um, right so and we're even like kids, oh, we're gonna set up the calm down corner we're gonna practice self-regulation skills I'm gonna teach my kids that right and still I have to have my own space to do that right um, yes. yes and you have to be allowed to have your own feelings mm -hmm. even the the dark ones you know even the negative ones without beating yourself up for feeling those which we don't do to anyone else but when I feel them, it's like, Carrie, why do you feel that way? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That self, that self, that negative talk we have. Yeah. And in so pure joy, we, like I saw you do negative, right? Like in pure joy, we say there are no negative emotions. They're all emotions that we, we know, like in your therapy, we know we talk to clients about all emotions are valid here. And yet internally, are we, are we really agreeing with that when we have them ourselves? Like, I should not be feeling this way, right? Comes up so much for us, so. Yeah, oh. and that's why to some extent, this really difficult period was a blessing because you be walking your own talk, no matter how much you believe it, if you're not walking your own talk, there is a limit to how much you can teach it and coach it and bring it out in other people if you're not embodying it, especially as a mom, because your kids see you at your best and at your worst. Mm -hmm. And they see, you know, they see all of it. Like your clients and your students get the best version of you. And mm -hmm. then you go home and you're like, <laughs> Are you know what I mean? I know. And, and all my strategies of like giving, giving, giving all I've got, and then going home and being like, oh, these are all my feelings. And 
you know, those mm -hmm. strategies weren't working anymore as a mom, a 24 seven yeah. person, you know, person in this world who can't just put their own stuff aside for everyone else. And again, and you use even... that. Yeah. You use that word hypocrisy. And so I brought, I brought you here to talk about the five love languages, which we'll get into in a second, but that you use the word, it's not hypocrisy. And it's funny you say that because that has come up in my marriage several times. Like when, yeah, I go, I go home. I'm not the same person I am with everybody else. He mm -hmm. gets the brunt of it. He sees the all sides of me and it has come up that hypocrisy. Well, you teach kids yoga, right? And that home, like this, all this stuff's coming out, right? So that word has come up. And um, I think it's really fascinating the work that you do with the five love languages, because that is that is a way to connect in the home, right? Specifically yeah. on how we connect with each other. Um, so I I and don't know, we should transition to like, what is the five love languages, first of all, for people that yes. don't have any clue? Because, and I'm really, I really appreciate you bringing that up and being vulnerable because that is, it is a really hard thing to say, this is who I am when I'm giving, giving, giving. And then sometimes I'm not that when I come home. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that can cause, understandably, problems in your marriage and in your family life. Mm -hmm. And so one of the great things about love languages is, um, let's say you come home, you've been giving, giving, giving all day, being able to communicate that to Tanner, your husband, and mm -hmm. say, I have been giving all day and this is what I need from you, right? What do you need from me? Mm -hmm. But when you don't know how to then give that to the other person, like speak their love language, doesn't go anywhere, right? You can request what you need all you want, but you haven't learned to actually speak the language. So um, the five love languages are quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. And I have got your results, your interior's results, and it's really great that quality time is your top love language for both of you, strongly for Tanner, and kind of equal with words of affirmation for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then words of affirmation is also Tanner's second. So your top two are the same. And so what's great about that is you, you sort of know how to speak those languages, but you still have to speak each other's dialects. You know how in English, you've got all these dialects, you've got Irish, Scottish, Welsh, American, you know, English, you have to learn what does quality time mean to you? And what does quality time mean to Tanner? And then when he says to you, well, you've been gone all day, you've been giving to others, I would like some quality time with mm -hmm. you. His version of quality time right? Which might be watching, I don't know, sports or something, which I'm not really into, but <laughs> that's what you do. You sit together and you do what feels qual like quality time to him. Mm -hmm. And then let's say the rules are reversed. He's been gone all day and um, you want some quality time with him. Well, what does that look like for you? And then words of affirmation is also very different. So that's a good example with my husband and I. He's uh, much more left-brained, logical, not touchy feely guy and so words of affirmation for him are more related to like the kind of person he is in the world um the kind of doctor he is the kind of father he is more like a I guess external mm -hmm. that roles. yeah where yeah. my words of affirmation I need because Ben sees both my husband Ben sees both sides of me right he sees super helper carry and then burnout carry <laughs> and I need him to affirm that he loves both and that he sees the the core of both right is the same mm -hmm. but um but that I'm working on balancing all of it mm -hmm. right and so it sounds like you and Tanner kind of have that same situation of um and so le actually let me ask you Tanya mm -hmm. what does quality time look like for you what does that mean so this has so this has shifted over our course of our marriage like before the before kids and the after kids right so we really love to spend time before kids playing sports together we did tennis together we did volleyball leagues together um we'd watch movies together you know all that kind of stuff so doing yeah being together doing the things we love that are the same 
but also uh, love to go out on dates, which stopped really after kids. It's like really challenging. We don't have family around. We don't have, you know, we haven't had a lot of babysitters that we've had. We live in the middle of nowhere to go on dates. It's like, it's a long excursion. So I love that. And I've asked him over the years, can you plan some, right? And not thinking like, actually, that's more important to me if I plan the dates. With I was like thinking of this whole like romantic get away, right? That oh, the guy plans the dates and they you know do all that that stuff, and actually it's more important to me. So I realized that over the year, like I'm the planner one. I plan the dates. So, um, yeah, quality time I think has shifted for both of us to being with our kids as well and being in that um, role together, like camping, mm. hiking, family movies, um, but also understanding that, yeah, we don't actually, the one-on-one -on -one isn't happening a lot lately. And I think there has been a major disconnect in the last few months. Like we need actually need to be alone <laughs> together. Yes. Well, yeah. and the other thing is, I'm glad you bring that brought that up because it does change a lot with kids. Uh, love languages do evolve. And so it's important mm -hmm. to check in periodically and say, are these still your love languages? Mm -hmm. First of all, and usually they stay relatively the same, but what's your dialect, right? Like what does quality time look like for you now? And when you say quality time with family, that's important, but that's technically not mm -hmm. your quality time. We really want to know what your individual quality time with Tanner is and then what your in your what quality time looks like with the whole family but yeah. have the two separate things that are prioritized and I just a word of advice something that's helped me with the babysitter situation <laughs> because of anxiety about leaving you know what I mean yeah uh, is to have to be in the house but have a babysitter come mm. it's like somebody's here playing with Ollie teaching mm. all you know fun stuff doing artwork together he's entertained he's cared for if he needs somebody to help him with the yeah. bathroom or give him some food and then ben and i can actually like have a date in the house you know get yeah. take go sit somewhere <laughs> just talk and eat but we don't necessarily have to drive far away and worry that something's going to happen when Olive, Oliver gets older. I'm hoping that will, you know, obviously be possible, but I feel like when they're young, I don't know, maybe that's just a modern parent thing, but you're just so scared that. Yeah. It's going to happen. Like what if it, is, a, it is important, like to, I, I understand all the research, right. It is important. And the five link love languages are developed from Daniel Gottman. Is that correct? No. So John okay. Gottman, John Gottman. Awesome. and okay. just so you know, my on my website the conflict resolution course is all Gottman based okay but five language love languages is Gary Chapman oh Gary Chapman okay and then he also partnered with Ross Campbell to do the five love languages of children which I of course oh. grabbed right away because mm -hmm. I love to do couples therapy but I families that's my favorite whole families because families are so interesting, aren't they you know like, yeah yeah and it's I mean that's why I love the work of parent coaching because you know, my family dynamic growing up, obviously it, it informs the way you want to do your family. And then you're bringing in your husband or your partner, their family dynamic. And you're trying to like, you, and it, you really the gap, have to right? talk about, yeah, this is the vision I have for our family. This is the vision. And then how do we bring yeah. those together harmoniously? Because if you never talk about it, you're actually both kind of like, working to uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen so yeah. you're counteracting each other yeah and the yeah the value talking about the values and just having all these conversations and your work you know having a person like you come and coach or work through some of the things is necessary sometimes because those conversations are hard to have in your everyday life you know just yeah. I've tried the family meetings right like have family meetings, sit down and talk, you know, and it, it's, it's hard to do when you don't have it specifically on your calendar and committed to a person or paying a person. Oh, 
that's some accountability, right? I, I right. paid for this service and we're going to try to work this out. So, yeah. And it's funny because uh, COVID put everything online and online isn't my favorite thing, but the big benefit of it is I can talk to people in their homes. Mm-hmm. Like you could have Tanner come right now and sit next to you and have a babysitter come and hang out with your kiddos while we talk. Right. Which is a really nice benefit of online therapy because mm-hmm. it's just easier to fit into crazy family schedules. And right. then if you want to bring the kids in, you can. But if it's just mm-hmm. you and Tanner this session, great. The kids are taken care of. But mm-hmm. you're, you don't have to leave. You don't have to go find a therapist's office. And you don't even have to put, you can wear your yoga pants. You don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, the point of shoes. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and I mean, a lot of the people I work with are homebodies and introverts. And it's like, this is, you know, there's somebody out there for you if you really want to look for it. And that's why I love bringing on different moms and their businesses, because it, it is a trust thing, too. I want to get to know the person that I'm working with. And um, Carrie's a wonderful person to work with. She's got open heart and um yeah, just Thank I'm you. so happy to have you. I was going to say something else. Things. Oh, go ahead. I feel like that's a big strength of mine is like I really I have so much hope because I've seen how good men, good mental health and mindfulness and work, especially with couples and families, can really make a family blossom and have so much more fun together and love each other better. I'm p- very passionate about helping everyone love each other better. Yes. So, yes, spread the love, <laughs> spread yeah. the love. And, and that's why love languages is, is, is awesome. Cause that's, that's what it is. How do we love each other better? Yeah. And I didn't do my two children's, but I'm thinking physical touch is really high up there on, on this, this one. He, he's, he yeah. came on, you know, touch. Yeah. He needs a hug. Um, very touchy feely. And so thinking about the quality time and the discussion we were having earlier about giving of ourselves and giving of ourselves. And one reason why I did leave the classroom was because I didn't have anything left for quality time with my own family and seeing how, even not knowing, you know, taking the quiz, there's a free quiz you can all take if you want to, even not taking the quiz, you can still kind of understand right where you're going to fall in these and understanding that I didn't I didn't have enough to give my own family I needed to step back um, so that I could speak my own love language and those around me um, reassessing my my highest values in the family and it's hard because I love to work like I love I love this this is this lights me up but I can find a way to fit it in um, throughout my that that balance, that middle path of you matter too. Mm -hmm. How do we make them both happen? Yeah. Yeah. And and with love languages too, it helps you realize that like you were talking about your cup, filling your cup, Mm -hmm. like you're, this is how you fill your cup and ask to have your cup filled by your family. But it's also, really important to know how to fill your kids cups and your husband's cup because when everyone's cups are mostly filled then everyone's going to be able to be more flexible and balance Mm -hmm. each other out right yeah when everyone's cups are empty it's like you're just going to butt heads constantly yeah nobody's needs are being met so everybody's just crying out for for what they need that's a little bit, flow. you were talking about the benefits. So you, we've been talking a lot about the benefits of doing this work with yourself and with your clients. Is there anything else that you didn't touch on that you've seen like really big benefits with your family and with your clients' families? I mean, a huge benefits with my clients' families, because a lot of times parents and parents assume their kids have the same love languages they do and they don't. Mm. Um, and even the hardest one that I found is physical uh, is a uh, receiving gifts because mm. money, right. Yeah, is yeah. Such a touchy thing. But when someone's love language is receiving gifts, there are ways to do that, that don't have to be expensive. 
um, signing up to go make something together. It can, mm. That can count. It's like, that's quality time, but that's also receiving gifts because you're making something for your child mm. or your spouse and giving it to them. And so that's been a harder one, I think, receiving mm. gifts to find strategies around that don't break the bank, um, yeah. where physical touch is free, but you'd mm. be surprised that some people who aren't as touchy-feely, um, like my husband, isn't yeah. as touchy feely, right? He has to remind himself that Terry needs hugs, right? Yeah. And since becoming a father, I've seen him become more demonstrative, which mm -hmm. is so beautiful. <laughs> and so he's very demonstrative with Oliver and I now, because he knows he, Oliver and I both clearly need hugs. <laughs> like we're very much huggers. Um, and he's not, but it almost makes you appreciate the hug more knowing that that's not his love language yeah that he's, do, he's doing the work yeah he's he's outside of his comfort zone he's right. yeah really loving you more, right? right where previously it was like why doesn't he want to hug me you know what I mean like wh why isn't that in him it was more of a negative and it totally transforms the way you see it when you can understand it just helps families understand each other better and mm -hmm. that's what to me therapy is all about counseling and therapy is about deeper self-understanding, deeper understanding of your loved ones, and then ideally deeper understanding of all of humanity. Because um, I think you and I are the same there where we're kind of like, we like to be activists. And we I, every time mm -hmm. I read something, I'm always thinking, well, how can I use this to help make the world a better place? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a well, huge down. conversation in well, <laughs> about the, you know, the, the starfish metaphor, right? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> we can't I have to throw all the starfish is back in the ocean it's it's really hard but I really want to right so it, that's again that middle path right Carrie really wants to throw all the starfishes in the ocean but she has a family who she yeah. loves who yeah. she wants to spend time with and I tend to have a tendency to be like well it's selfish for me to uh you know take time just to do nothing <laughs> you know what I mean yeah but but this has helped me realize pure joy has helped me realize which we went through that training together and then a lot of like buddhist and spiritual studies mm -hmm. that it's a balance it's yeah. always a balance yeah and without that that ohm finding that ohm that inner peace yeah. acceptance it, we really aren't having that ripple that we want to have in the world because we aren't emanating that frequency of love and acceptance and like like I don't know if that was before we press record about like yeah just being able to share that love that we have so much of um yeah. it has to be internal first right it has there it has, has to be so much self-compassion yeah because I feel like well then I'm modeling for Ollie to give everyone else love but not himself just like mommy does, right? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That's not what I want for him. And so being a, a mother, being a parent, I feel like is the hardest job, the most awesome job, right? The most challenging experience and also the best experience. And boy, does it bring your chickens home to roost because <laughs> you can't get away with it anymore. Yeah. yeah. You just can't. You have yeah. to walk your talk. Yes. Uh <laughs> I know it's it's, just, it's it's a hard walk it's a hard talk to walk um and that's what the inner work all these things finding these things that work for you so if the five love languages are something that's speaking to you lis listeners mm -hmm. um and you want to dive deeper into that work um carries your person and um I can hold this up this is on my website it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell it. Yeah. Tell us your website. Tell us where to find you. Yeah. And I'll have more in the description of the video and on the podcast. This goes on YouTube and um, any podcast platform that you listen to. So we'll put the the links in there too. But just tell us for listening purposes. So my website is mindfulfamilymentor.com. Um, and that's the name of my counseling business <laughs> and I uh, have like a set set uh, hourly fee on there but I also because of social justice work am open to sliding scales especially for people mm -hmm. with um, financial challenges so just reach out if that's the case 
Um, and I also have a lot of free stuff because I just, uh, one of the things I'm also passionate about is a mental health curriculum K through 12 to try to make mental health much more accessible to everybody mm-hmm. because I don't think it should be, it should be everywhere. It shouldn't be something you have to pay for, which again, right. It's like, right. well, people have to make a living, but we also have to balance that with the reality of, of some people's financial lives. But anyway, mm-hmm. www.mindfulfamilymentor.com. And if you go on there, you can sign up for a weekly free resource to come into your email inbox, but you can also click on courses. And if you scroll down to the love languages course, click on love languages and a PDF will open that has all the love languages, where to take the quiz. Um, and like Tanya said, even just reading about them, you might intuit what yours is. But taking the quiz can help facilitate it for people who are less um, keen to sit and think about what their love language is. (laughs) Let the quiz tell them for them. And then it also um, gives you the love languages examples. So I like that, too, because it's like, okay, my love language is is, uh, acts of service. Well, what does that mean? Right. So really taking the time. What does that mean for me specifically? Mm -hmm. That's so important. So definitely go grab that worksheet on uh, my website under love languages, under courses. And then there's also one about conflict resolution, which when I work with couples and families, I usually start with love languages and then move to conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. So just some suggestions there if you want to do your own work on your own. And if you need some uh, facilitation, I've learned that with pure joy. I'm not taking care of people or helping people. I'm facilitating people caring for themselves and helping themselves so if you need facilitation just reach out and we'll make it happen yeah thank you so much carrie i tried to do it all on my own for so many years and i realized why am i doing that right that was just a pattern that i had and there are so many resources nowadays and uh, i i appreciate your social justice work so much the sliding scale there are there are ways to get involved with people that are there to help you so Um, We could talk on and on, like for so many things. I have so many more questions because we didn't dive into each of the five love languages, but that's the point of a podcast. Go do your research and go find Carrie's information and you can learn more. So thank you so much, Carrie. Um, And we will maybe get together again for the other questions that I have because it's so fun talking to you. I would love to. (laughs) All right. Bye, everyone.